another literature lesson. And this is by an Indian author, Munshi Premchand. I'm sure you, in your Hindi lessons, you might have read some Hindi stories of Premchand. He's a very well-known writer, isn't it? So here is one of his translation, The January Night. It is there in your new Oxford Modern English Reader. And we are going to begin that lesson. So let us proceed. First thing first, let us know a little bit more about the author, Munshi Premchand. Who is this author? Now, he was born on 30th, 31st July, 1880. And he died on 8th October, 1936. Okay, so that was his lifespan. Now, Munshi Premchand was an Indian writer, famous for his modern literature. He was a Adhunik uh, writer, okay, according to Hindi literature. And his original name was Dhanpat Rai Srivastav. So, initially he began with the pen name Nawab Rai, but subsequently he switched to Premchand and Munshi being an honorary prefix. Now, you know, he was a Munshi. Munshi ji we call certain people. It is an upadhi. It is not something, a part of his name. It got stuck to his name because of that honorary prefix that he had, Munshi ji, Premchand, Munshi Premchand. Prefix because it is fixed before his name. Now, he is one of the most celebrated writers of the Indian subcontinent and is regarded as one of the most foremost Hindi writers of the earlier, early 20th century. Now, in fact, he is one of my favorite authors too. Ever since childhood, when I was in school like you are, when I was in class 6, I think that was the first time I read one of his novels and I still remember those stories even now. And when I grew up, I used to read more stories of Munshi Premchand and that is how my Hindi also improved quite a lot reading Premchand stories. He had very, very realistic characters and day-to-day, uh, -day, very ordinary, whom we could relate to. And the, the subtle nuances of relationships, it's a delight. If you have not read any story by Munshi Premchand, you must read. Okay, like I was telling you, Munshi Premchand was a novelist and one of his most famous novels are Godan, Karma Bhumi, Gaban, Man Sarovar, Eidgah. Now these are very well-known ones and probably a little too mature for you also. Maybe you would, you would like to read these books when you grow up a little bit. But uh, the story which I was mentioning to you about when I was in class 6 is the story Budhi Kaki. That is by Munshi Premchand and it talks about a relationship of a granddaughter with her grandma and how it talks about how childhood returns again in old age because old age is second childhood. It is also known as second childhood and it's a beautiful story. You must read it. Now, he published his first collection of five short stories in 1907 in a book called Soze Vatan. A novel writer, story writer, and he was a dramatist. By the way, Budi Kaki is a play. So it was a drama. Yes, so he was a story writer, a novel writer, as well as a dramatist. And he has been referred to as the Upanya Samrat by the writers. He's called the emperor. You know, Samrat means emperor, emperor among novelists. He has been given this, um, this honor. His work includes more than a dozen novels, around 300 short stories, several essays and translations of a number of foreign literary works into Hindi. So he also translated a lot of literature into the Hindi literature and made it much richer. Fine. And his work also have been translated. His work in Hindi, his novels in Hindi, his stories in Hindi have also been translated into English, like he has translated certain works from Hindi. Now, the story that we are going to do today, January night, is also one such translation. Okay. Okay, again, the name of the story is January night, and it is a Hindi novel, uh, actually, originally, and the name of it was Poos Ki Raat. Now, Poos means Pos Kamahina. So it is the Poos month, that is the Pos month is actually December, January, 15 January to uh, 15 December to 15 January. And it ends with the 
uh, with the celebration of Sankranti. Yes, we have Besaki, Sankranti, that time. So it is actually that, the harvest festival. So this particular um, season of the year is very, very, very cold. We all know in India, January is the coldest month, isn't it? December, end of December and beginning of January. And that's why we have our winter vacations during that time. Now, this particular novel, Uski Rath, is translated by David Rubin. And it is an abridged version of the story. The one which that you have in your book, which we are going to start today, is actually an abridged version. And what do you mean by an abridged version, students? That means it is not the original translation. It is not a literal translation. It has been made simpler for children. Okay, so the original book has much higher language and maybe much bigger philosophy, deeper philosophy, which may not be very easy for you to understand at this age. So it has been simplified and that is an abridged version. So we are going to read January Night, the translation done by David Rubin. Fine. And, but the original one is Poos Ki Raad by Munshi Premchan. Clear? Are you clear with the students? Now, in many of his stories, what was his style of Premchan? He always generally dealt about, you know, he was uh, a, a writer of the people, of the society. Now, often I have learned, as I, as I am a literature student, I have done my graduation in literature, uh, we have been told, and, and that is what even I have understood from my reading, that literature is a reflection of the society. Yes, literature is a reflection of the society. And this is exactly what Premchan does in his novels. He reflects the society that he was living in at that time. And so by reading his stories, we get to know about the people's lives in those days. See, in those days, students, there weren't any movies, cinemas, cameras. Okay, so nobody could click and nobody could keep these memories. Nobody could tell us these things through a movie or through pictures or through videos like we can do easily now. We can always keep memories of so many things, pleasant, unpleasant memories in our mobile phones, in the CDs, in our hard drives, in the hard disks, this external drive. And we can keep it for posterity and our future generation can see it and understand. And these are also archived. These stories are archived and we can retrieve certain recordings and videos, okay, much later in life. But that is not the state in those days. In those days, these authors, they took the responsibility of recording whatever was happening around in the society and so that other people get to know what happened in those days and also the people living in those days got some kind of solace that yes somebody is thinking about us somebody is writing about us clear students and also maybe he had certain solutions he had certain lessons he had certain um, tips for the people so that people could lead their lives in a much much better way so what was his story generally in all his stories he dealt with the cruelty and the pride of the privileged classes. Now, there has always been a divide. Even now, students, we know that there is always a divide between the rich and the poor. And we are all privileged. Why? Because we are on the lucky side. We are on the greener side of the field. Yes. So, but there are, there is always this divide of the rich and the poor. And we know that there are some people who are kind, who they are rich yet they are very kind and they are very fair but often that is not the story isn't it sadly unfortunately that is not the story all the time it's generally what happens is that the people who are poor they have to face a lot of hardships in life just because they are poor for no other reason isn't it they might be as educated as we are they might be as talented as we are they might be as good looking as we are but the only fact that cripples them is that they are poor. Yes, even in, in these corona times, you can see that a person who is poor, if he is inflicted with corona, what happens to that person vis-a-vis -a, -vis a person 
like Amitabh Bachchan. He went to the best of hospitals and he got the best of the treatments and he was back home. But is it so for the case of the poor people? We see in the news, so many poor people are even deprived a bed in the hospital. Yes, so he shows this great sympathy for the poor peasants. Generally, um, India is actually a land of farmers. So he has a lot of soft corner for the poor peasants, the farmers. This story also narrates the plight of an Indian farmer, Halku, during the harsh winter night in the month of January. That is Poos Ki Ek Raat. That means one night in the, in the day of a farmer. So let us read to understand. So now we're going to begin the story and uh, I'll just narrate the story in a gist, means very briefly. And I've got these pictures for you so that you can remember the story better. These images will help you to visualize the story and help you to remember the story better. Though you have some pictures in the books, in the book also, you could refer to those pictures as well. Now, right at the beginning, uh, to the extreme left, I've got a picture of a farmer and his wife. That is representative of Halku and his wife, Munni. Now, we can see uh, right at the beginning, there is a little argument between the husband and wife, isn't it? Over some money. And interestingly, it is not that the wife demands more money. She wants her husband to do something with that money. And he wants to do a different thing with that money. They are divided in their opinion about how that money has to be spent and that is a picture of a one rupee note in those days if this was the kind of one rupee note that they used to have which we don't have now it has been replaced by the one rupee coin now and what can you get in one rupee nowadays isn't it but in those days the wife was very angry that the husband halku wanted his three rupees the, the three rupees that she had saved okay she had saved and why had she saved that yes it is for that blanket i can i have clubbed that rupee with the blanket three rupees he could buy one they could buy one blanket for themselves now why did they want that blanket because it was post kirat and during the this is i told you it is very close to the harvesting season the crops are ripe but they have to wait for the crops to get totally ripe and they have to wait for the right time. And that is the poos. The month of poos needs to pass and it should be the next month. That is in the that is uh, after Sankranti. That is the time when they harvest. So now they have nothing to do much. Now the field is harvested. The seeds have been sown and the, the field is almost ready. The corn or the whatever grain they are growing whether it's wheat corn or rice it is the field is almost ready but they have to now wait for the right time for the harvesting so what do they have to do at night they will have to they will have to guard the field yes they will have to guard the field and that is a very 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 difficult task for a farmer a farmer will be able to work very hard during the day but in the cold of the night of a january night can imagine without a blanket can a farmer go through that night in an Indian village it is very very tough and this particular story is the setting is in northern India in northern India you know the winters are fighting cold in North India so the wife has saved this three rupees to buy a blanket for her husband so that when he guards the fields at night, he, ha he is warm and he doesn't fall sick. But the irony of the situation is that Halku wants the money back from his wife. Not for anything else, but to pay the landlord his rent. So therefore, they are divided on this. And the wife is adamant that she will not give that money. She says, no, no, he can... He will pay, we will pay him, tell him we will pay after the harvest, not right now. Let him wait for a little while. He is the landlord and he has lots of money. Why can't he wait for some time? That's what Munni feels. But Halku did not like that. He says, okay, then I will have to listen to the, you know, uh, 
he will curse me and he will say a lot of things to me i will have to bear with all that insult fine if that's what you want me to bear fine so he knows very 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 clever halku is very clever he knows that his wife will not like him to be called names by anybody else and he would not like to be humiliated and so munni without an option she gives that money to halku and so that he can pay the landlord the rent fine so that worked and immediately munni went to one corner in the wall a niche in the wall and she took out the 3 rupees and handed them over to halku and then but she doesn't like this idea and so she says you must give up farming okay give up farming if you work as a hired laborer you will get at least some enough food to eat from it fine working fine work farming someone else's land you're not even farming your own land you're farming somebody else's land and then what do you get out of it you're giving the rent and then what happens to the harvest god knows we have to wait till for so long so she just doesn't like the idea she says you work as a laborer you know we have to you know pay the rent for the field so halku took the money and he went outside and um, as though he was tearing his heart out while giving it away actually he had saved the rupees from his work piece by piece you know, that one rupee was saved penny wise every penny was being saved and then finally today he has to just give it away his heart sank lower because of the burden of poverty he felt so 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 heavy at that time his heart and he felt that i wish i was not so poor i wish i was able to afford this little money to buy a blanket of my own nevertheless he gave it away okay he gave it away and then that night he had to spend the night in the field yes and he had one very faithful dog jabra now this is the next part of the story the night that he spends on the field okay now we we see how jabra is his constant companion he follows him to the field and they both settle down and they they try to go to sleep but without a blanket and he also doesn't have any thing to be laid under the dog so he tells him ki okay, tomorrow i will get you some straw then you can sleep and they look at each other and how the dog also probably tries to understand what his master is saying and though they don't speak each other's language and don't understand each other's language but we can see a lot of love that is exchanged through their expressions through their eyes and that is very very warm that love keeps them very warm and you can see a picture here where they had uh, lighting up a little small fire and uh, they both try that comes a little later but now we uh, also see how halko is hugging jabra now jabra is a is a dog you know he is a uh, it's almost he's like a stray dog and he was domesticated and he was tamed by halko and ever since they both are together for a long time their relationship is very very old so halko considers him like his own brother and he hugs him despite the stench you know he's a he's a dog and he has he's halko doesn't have the money to keep himself warm so you can imagine can he keep halko uh, jabra clean no so whatever jabra can do manage on his own so he has that uh, stench of a dog the smell of a dog but when he hugs jabra he doesn't mind that smell he doesn't mind it at all he seems to embrace him and hug him as though he was his own brother he would do the same with his own brother and jabra and halku they both are so happy in each other's company and that really warms your heart that's a wonderful warm part of the story which is my favorite yes and then they try to go to sleep both of them but they are unable to do that immediately jabra hears some noise in the field and he starts barking so halku wonders what it is what it could be and uh, but jabra keeps on barking halku whistles to him and he wants him to come back but 
Jabra doesn't want to listen to him. So this is the second part of the story. We have completed part one and part two of the story. In the next video, we will be doing part three and four, where Halku will light up a fire and what happens later on in the later part of the night, we will learn in the next video. But before we end the video, I have certain things to tell you. These are some points which I want you to note down. Okay, certain points which you should understand which the author, Brainchand, is trying to convey to all the readers. The first thing that comes across here is the harsh reality of a farmer's life, his poverty-stricken life. We get a glimpse into the sad and poverty-stricken life of Halku and through that, he is a representative of all Indian farmers. We get to see how, how helpless they are. And just even for a, for a blanket, they have to really save their savings. Which we, you know, when, when you want to buy a blanket, you just go to the market and buy one. Or you just order on Amazon, isn't it? But for them, they will have to save so much for such a long time to buy one blanket for themselves. And if you feel that this was the story of the Indian farmer so many years back and now it is not so, I'm sorry students, you are mistaken. Even now, the Indian farmer's life is exactly like this. It has not improved. Not much. There are a few farmers who might have. But very, very, a big majority, a very big majority of Indian farmers still have this harsh, poverty-stricken life, even today. Okay, So the people who are bringing food to your table actually don't have a meal to eat themselves, a proper meal. So that is the irony of life. And you should understand that. I wanted you to know that. Now, the second point, the cruelty of the capitalist. That means the landlord. The field belongs to a land. Lord, and he is working on that landlord's fee, uh, field and so he had to pay the rent for that and so because he did not have a land of his own but the capitalist the landlord he was not ready to understand that okay fine Halku will pay me after the harvest season when he gets enough money was he understanding no so we are brought to this harsh reality that the capitalist, that means the people who have money, they are the capitalists. They often are cruel and unkind to the people who are poor and who are under them, who are indebted to them. Fine, it is even today. Yes, the sense of pride gaining priority over physical comfort. Now, Halku was very conscientious. He, you can see his priorities. What was his priority? His priority was self-pride. Self anybody abusing him, anybody saying something which, is, which, is, which will humiliate him was not okay with him. He was not okay with that at all. Even his wife was in sync with him. They did not, they did, they did not mind spending the night in the cold, but they definitely could not accept anybody abusing them. So that is the Indian farmer and his pride. Next, we come to the true love of Munni and Halku, even amidst the adversity. So they were living in very, very adverse situations, means a lot of poverty. Yet, their love, was it tainted? No. Their love was intact. They loved each other. They tried to understand each other. And they gave up for each other. Why was Munni uh, fighting over the three rupees? Was she wanting something for herself? She never wanted anything. She wanted that money for her husband so that he was warm in the cold night outside. And the humanity in Halku untouched by harsh reality, the way he embraced Chapra, that he was, for him, humanity was much higher than anything else. So he loved all creatures and he also embraced Chapra the way Munni was a part of his life. So this is so beautiful and I wanted you to note these elements in the story before we move on to part 3 and part 4.
Okay, do you remember these things, students? Before we end today's lesson, I want you to focus on some important phrases which you need to understand, okay, which needs a little um, understanding. In the sense, I have found two idioms so far in part one and part two of your lesson. If you see that lesson is divided into part one and part two, part three, part four, there are four parts of the lesson. So today we have done the first two parts. In those two parts, we have come across some idioms and both these idioms begin with the verb put. Okay, so one is put off and one is put up with. I want you to focus on these and there are many such idioms which is listed at the end of the lesson. Just if you turn the pages, you will see that there is an exercise on idioms where all these phrasal verbs put up, put, put in, put off, many such phrases are there. So have a look at them and we will discuss the, these in the online classes. Fine. So put off is something, you know, when you want to delay something. Put up with is to tolerate something. Fine. Now apart from this, there are some other expressions also which we come across uh, right like in the first thing we have seen. Bitter truth came charging like a wild beast. The bitter truth of life, the harsh reality came charging like a wild beast. Now this is a simile. Yes, like means a simile. So what is being compared to what? The harsh reality of life is compared to a wild beast. Why? Because just like a beast charges you and it follows you and it haunts you. So the same way the harsh truth of life was charging them. Find the poor the farmers. Next one. His head sank lower under the burden of poverty. Now this is another philosophy of life that because of the burden of poverty, now the burden of poverty is pushing his head down. He is feeling the burden of life and he is feel, feeling so burdened as though the burden of poverty is a, is a human being, is a living thing and he is being pushed, his head is being pushed lower by that burden. So that is something that it is visual, you must understand. Look at this philosophy that how much the people, the farmers, they suffer because of this poverty that their head has to be low. Why? Because they are subjugated. They have to accept the tyranny or they have to accept the, the injustice. They have to accept the cruelty of the rich people who are above them. Now the stars seem to be shivering. It was so cold. Now this I found it very interesting that the stars seem to be shivering. When he was out in the night in the field, uh, he looked up in the night sky and he saw that the stars were shivering. Now the stars twinkle. Do they shiver? But, the, uh, but how interestingly the author has used as though the stars are also feeling so cold, are cold and so they are shivering. So this is a personification. Fine. Another interesting uh, humor is that he uh, teases Jabra and he tells them, what did you think? That I'm going to eat puris and sweets in the field. Now, puri and sweet is uh, something which is most tempting to anybody, even the dogs. Yes, they also love to have sweets and puris. They also love it. So he, Halku says that, why are you following me? You thought I'm going to have a nice delight, delicacy out here. I'm going to have a feast. You came, you're so stupid. You've come here to suffer. So he makes fun of Jabra and uh, the interesting humor was something that I didn't want you to miss. Now there is another streak of humor that is, I hope you have noted that, that the name of the, of the person is Halku, whereas his, he is actually a very heavyweight person. He's quite fat, and uh, but the name is Halku. Okay, now, rewards of farming. Now, this is another uh, e expression which I wanted you to understand. These are the rewards of farming. Now, he speaks in a very bitter way, in, a, in, in, in an ironical way. 
reward for farming is generally the harvest is supposed to be something good but he is talking about the sad truth of life that they don't get much comfort and they don't get any hardly do they get any reward out of farming these are the rewards the suffering the the uh, the way they are shivering in the night the way they are guarding in the night without sleep out in the cold so these hardships are the rewards of farming so he is pointing to another philosophy of life a very sad truth of life is being pointed out here that these are the rewards of farming next we also say he also says like some witch who is like a witch who is being compared now this is a simile what is compared to a witch like a witch now we can see the cold weather is equated to a witch who is tormenting what is a witch do a witch will cast a spell on you and it will make you suffer so same way the cold is he is being tormented or he is suffering because of the cold weather so the cold weather seem to be like a witch so that is a simile next one not crippled by poverty now he was not crippled by poverty that's a very beautiful expression that poverty had not made him unkind now see uh, it happens that when people go through bitter experiences in life they also turn very bitter they turn bitter and because they want to pass on their bitterness to other people i have not faced happiness why should i be uh, kind to other people that is generally the tendency of people but that is has not affected him poverty has not affected halku he was not crippled by poverty yet he was rather very kind and this singular friendship now what friendship are we talking about jabra and halku it's a beautiful relationship and this singular friendship is illuminating his life his illuminating his heart and uh, the, his whole life is enlightened and illuminated means it is lit up because of this beautiful relationship that he shares with jabra the dog and uh, that is a very very a uh, beautiful aspect of life that human beings are capable of sharing this kind of love not only with each other but also with animals and you can derive a lot of joy out of such relationships that the uh, the bond that is shared between the master and his dog is indeed very special and that is something which is so beautiful that i did not want you all to miss fine so have a look at all these words and see and underline them wherever they come if you read the lesson well you will be able to identify these lines you can come back to this video again and again and again if you can't find the words you can pause it here look for it in the book it will be a good exercise okay every time giving out the page numbers will make you lazy isn't it students so get some work get some work uh, done and uh, go through the chapter read it many times so that we are ready for the next lesson fine till then bye bye